Hello, welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, we chat with Quincy College President Mike Bellotti, and Bruce Van Dyke is here from the college's biotechnology program. We're going to learn all about the fall semester and other activities at the college. First, though, as always, we check out the weather and the news for you this morning. Currently in Quincy, it's gorgeous out there. Bright blue skies, beautiful sunshine at 79 degrees right now. The humidity is checked out. It'll top off in the comfortable mid 80s this afternoon. Nice night coming up tonight. Can open up the windows for a change. Temperatures will dip into the mid 60s and a pretty nice weekend coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow, just a chance of a shower. Otherwise, sunshine and uh, low humidity, high around 80 degrees. I think Sunday is the pick of the weekend. Sun and clouds. The high around 80 and turning more humid again on Monday with some hazy sunshine. Monday's high into the mid, maybe even upper 80s. But right now, delightful 79 degrees here in Quincy. In the news today, the Marina Bay Ferry may be back up and running as early as next week. The Valkyrie has been out of service since an engine overheated back in mid-June. Now, the town of Winthrop, which owns and operates the ferry, says the engine has been replaced and they're just awaiting approval from the Coast Guard before resuming that service. Quincy began partnering up with the town of Winthrop to offer the seasonal ferry out of Squantum Point Park three years ago. The ferry offers trips to Boston, Winthrop, and Spectacle Island in Boston Harbor. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says he continues to work with the state to try and develop a year-round ferry service. Going to be at least a couple of more months before the red line is back up to full service. The MBTA says it will be at least mid-October now before repairs are completed following the June 11th derailment at the JFK UMass station. That derailment caused some major damage to signal systems and switches, forcing trains to run at reduced speeds and slowing the commute to and from Boston. Initially, the T had hoped to have the repairs completed by Labor Day. In the interim, though, the delays of up to 20 minutes on the red line are a daily occurrence. Well, the Kennedy Center here in Quincy is 10 years old today, and the public is invited to a celebration this afternoon. Mayor Thomas Koch says plans for future improvements at the center will be unveiled during today's celebration. You know, pavilion area for picnics, um um, bocce and, and horseshoe courts, a greenhouse, um, and some, some other amenities. And, and then down the road, we can add to that uh, and stay under the, uh, the particular uh, thresholds that, that kick in all of the DEP and EPA and Army Corps and Coastal Zone and uh, all the ridiculous uh, permitting process that we have to deal with. So it's been a, you know, it used to be a softball field back there for the school. It's not like this thing was a, a salt marsh flowing in and out. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's water that gets trapped in a rainfall because it's not draining well, and uh, and there you go. So at any rate, yeah. So we'll have the engineering team there to answer any questions from people. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is elevate the back of the school. As you as you know, that building, like the number of buildings in the school system, are and they're on piles. So the yep. land around it, you know, sinks. So right. uh, we've got to deal with that. Bring up the elevation. Uh, really clean up and uh, the parking in the back, and then of course add the amenities I just described. Also today, the public's invited to view some rare photographs and artwork of the Kennedy family. And seniors can enroll as members during today's celebration. That building was formerly home to the Miles Standish Elementary School, the Quincy Lodge of Elks, and the Beechwood Community Life Center. Quincy City Council President and Ward 2 Councilor Brad Crowell is already thinking about the new legislative session coming up in September. During our recent interview, Crowell said that his priorities include setting the new property tax rates and also overseeing the redevelopment of Quincy Center. <laughs> the budget that was done um, in effect of July 1 obviously becomes the benchmark for how you set the tax rate in the uh in the fall right and as i remind people you know the best time to advocate for a tax decrease is at budget time and or other expenditures that are presented mm -hmm. right so it's a prioritization thing as you know um that's sort of my skill and background mm -hmm. is finance and i've been very vocal up there for things that uh, i feel like are immediate needs and things that we could probably hold off till down the road because at the end of the day um, you know, taxation is something that's certainly on people's minds. I know because I 
like I hear, I knock on people's doors sure. and talk to people too. Um, so we'll be dealing with the tax rate, dealing with the downtown. Kroll is unopposed in this year's city election. He'll be entering his fifth two-year term in office. He will not be serving as council president during the next session after completing his two-year presidential term. And now that you are up to date with weather and news, let's check out our programming lineup for later on today here on Quincy Access Television. Starts with a replay of this program currently in Quincy today at 5 o'clock. Six o'clock, it's Sound Advice with Attorney Tom Williams. Hello folks, I'm Attorney Tom Williams and welcome to Sound Advice. Currently in Quincy, the interviews at 6.30 will feature the August Moon Festival that's coming up later this month. This year's Quincy Recreation Department Musical Theater Workshop at seven o'clock on Channel 8. Then at 8 o'clock, this year's Flag Day Parade, Ceremony, and Fireworks. They really do. As does the music. Porch Fest performances from Wollaston Hill Part 2 tonight at 10 o'clock. Check out Channel 9 every day. Learn about Quincy City Department's different committee activities. Starts at 5.30 with Quincy in focus. Norfolk County Prevention Coalition program at 6 p.m. tonight. It's all about fire sense. FYI from the Quincy Health Department at 6.30. Tonight's topic, vertigo. A new legislative update with State Representative Bruce Ayers. His guest, Representative Ruth Balzer of the Committee on Elder Affairs at 7 o'clock. Then at 7.30, we go in your neighborhood with Ward 6, Councillor William Harris. The recent 215th United States Army Band concerts in Quincy at 8 o'clock tonight. And then at 10 o'clock, find out what's happening at your library in the month of August. Welcome to At Your Library. Get a complete program schedule over on our website, qatv.org. When you get there, just click on Program Schedule. Also, don't forget, you can always like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget, too, check out our weekly ad in the Quincy Sun. Coming up, we take a look at a few of the current events and activities that are featured right now in our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for your information. Please stay tuned. We're back with you in just one minute. Welcome back. Here is a check of some of the current events and activities that are being shown right now in our electronic bulletin board on Channel 8 for your information. Quinn Cycles has two rides coming up tomorrow. Sea to Summit rides begin at 7.30 at the Bernazani School, or there's a shorter ride that starts at 9 o'clock at the Marymount School. You can visit their website, quincycles.org, and learn about both of those rides tomorrow. It is the 32nd annual August Moon Festival being held August 18th from noon to 5 on Coddington Street in Quincy Center. Admission is free. The event features live music, entertainment, games, prizes. There'll be a variety of food and refreshments. You can visit QuincyAsianResources.org and learn more about it. The 11th annual fundraising fair at the Fenno House in Wollaston will be held August 16th and 17th from 9 to 3. The event this year includes a yard sale, raffle, food, and much, much more. They have their own website, fennohouse.org. And a fundraiser to benefit research into neurofibromatosis is set for August 17th from 4 to 7. This will be on board the Boston Bell sailing from Squantum Point Park at Marina Bay. Cruising for Motown, as it's called, will feature music, dancing, food, and more. You can visit the website nfnortheast.org for more information. And if you have an event or an activity you'd like to promote, visit our website, qatv.org. Just download a bulletin board request form, fill it out, send it in, get that message up here on Channel 8 too. Coming up, we sit down with Quincy College President Mike Bellotti and Bruce Van Dyke of the college's biotechnology and good manufacturing program to learn about the fall season. That's next.
Welcome back. Here we are early August, but already thoughts are starting to turn towards September and back to school and the fall semester. And it's no different at Quincy College. President Mike Bellotti is joining us to give us a little update on what's been happening at the college and what's coming up in the fall. And uh, also, we're so pleased to welcome back, after quite a long time, Bruce Van Dyke from the college's biotechnology and now good manufacturing program to learn about some new developments in that program. So, gentlemen, welcome. Welcome. Thanks Thank for coming. You. Great to see you. Thanks for having us again. This is a Pleasure. great service and it's a good opportunity to talk about educational programs and uh, what a great institution Quincy College is. Absolutely. Uh, a lot has happened. Yeah. Uh, the nursing program has been reestablished, LPN and uh, Associates RN. Yes. Uh, and we're filling those cohorts now for the Plymouth and Quincy campus. Okay. Uh, we're also uh, broadening our athletics. We just picked up uh, a local guy. Uh, JJ, I call him, but uh, John Fury, who is a, a uh, quite a runner. He's coached and he's done. Uh, he's a professional uh, uh, trainer. Okay. Uh, he's going to head up our cross track. What's uh, his nickname, track. Mike? Jidge. Jidge. Yeah. Okay. I just pick up my uh, the Patriot Ledger. Uh, when I had the Patriot Ledger wrote, I picked up my papers right in front of his house. Yeah, on Beale Street by the old days. I'm sure he remembers. Oh, yeah, so, so, yeah, we're such a Quincy institution, but as we yeah. know, we're regional. We like to think we're urban, suburban, and global yeah. because of uh, the reach in well, terms of uh, online now, great right? stuff uh, that Bruce is doing. Sure. And uh, one thing I've learned quickly is that uh, everything we do at that college is driven by faculty and staff. Those staff that are interfacing and working with those students, some are non-traditional, average age is 28, mm. a number of veterans. Uh, they're the ones that... Uh, remove as many obstacles as possible to make sure they end up in Bruce's class mm -hmm. so that they can get a certificate for, right from Bruce and end up making over fifty thousand dollars with after nine classes hopefully right or get a two-year degree but Bruce is going to talk about that sure we've received a lot of grants because of his hard work yes in the recognition around the biotech industry yes. of what we do in terms of entry-level jobs around manufacturing is is an incredible need we, we could quadruple uh, the uh, the supply the demands in place but it, this is infrastructure challenges that we have to d go through to mm -hmm. continue to grow that program. Well, I remember when the, the Biotechnology Center was first founded, and, and you were here on this program yes. not too long ago. Yes. I was surprised to learn it was seven years ago. Yes, uh, time does fly. Time does fly. <laughs> um, but it, it was initially started with a huge state grant. Um, well, it was actually a huge federal grant. Federal grant. Yes, $3 million from the U.S. Department of Labor. Yes. Yeah, and then, of course, state funding came in as well. It, Right, time. under the former Patrick administration, yes, actually correct. developed the, the biotech uh, emphasis, I guess it will, in Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, and it was groundbreaking at the time. Now it's kind of, oh, yeah, biotech. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, we were, uh, we're, we were ahead of the curve yes. uh, in, in the technology that we were teaching at that time. Sure. And we plan on staying ahead of the curve. Yep. And that's what these new grants that we've gotten are all about. And so that students that are interested in getting into this field will be able to actually hit the ground running when they get out. So... Our program has won state awards, for platinum awards, for being the best at doing what we do. Wow. And so uh, we want to continue to do that as the, all these new technologies come in as well. Sure. Well, I mean, students that have graduated the program, say, when it was first started, where are they now? Oh, yeah, they're, they are, they've advanced quite a bit sure. in the companies they're in. Uh, we're getting ready to have a reunion with students that graduated five years ago. Sure. They all contacted me and want to do that. So, And all of them have advanced quite quite well within the companies yeah. they've been working in or they've gone from one company to the other to make get a further advancement. Well, I so think the key to the program is you take your cues from the industry itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's the way I founded the program initially. Right. Uh, the industry people actually came in and helped design the layout of the lab as we built it out. Yeah, and the that's the key. We're, we're working with the, the local, just a side note, we're working yeah. uh, in, a, in a similar manner with the local insurance agents. Uh, insurance carries in this region uh, to create a certificate program so that folks can fill those jobs that sometimes go unfilled in terms That's of right. customer service, uh, learning uh, th those entry level jobs because, as you know, uh, it may not be the sexiest industry, uh, but if you create a pathway to a, a job yes. through five to ten classes, you're filling a need, and we're writing the curriculum and we're, and we're developing the program with local employers. So, so essentially, you are yes. guaranteed a position if you go through the Quincy College program. Well, it, it almost. I mean, really. almost. Well, yeah. it, I mean, I think your, your hiring rate is about ninety-five percent. Ninety-eight percent. What other yeah. industry can claim that? So yeah, you, you could have a non-traditional yeah. student who might have been, you know, one or two years, maybe uh, uh, went to the military, mm -hmm. right? Or may, might have tried a foreign institution far away from home, just didn't work out, mm -hmm. and they can be working within a year, year and a half, yeah. at least longer for the associates. Yeah. But, uh, 
uh, you know, making over fifty-five thousand dollars a year, which is a very livable salary, even in this part of the country. Yeah. You know, to, and to start there, and they can continue yeah. on, right, and to grow from there. Exactly. And so this is this is really traditional. These fifty to sixty thousand a year with direct hires. Yes. Sometimes you get hired through recruiting agencies, okay. and it's temp to perm, and they always go to perm. Yeah. But it, well, you'll start a little less, but when that temporary job is over and you go to perm, you jump right back up into the high levels. And so, like, for example, just, just one graduate, 20-year-old uh, young man that graduated in May, uh, he just got a job immediately out of the gate, as most of the students do, yep. and he sent me his offer letter, you know, and they were starting him at 50000 and incredible benefits. At 20 years old, yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. Each single guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, it's I, you incredible. Know, I'm sure. I, w I don't know. I was working three jobs and earning half that probably. You know? So was that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so what about, is there space, Bruce, for, say, a non-traditional student, like an older yeah. person, to reinvent themselves? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we have a 10-month certificate program. Okay. And, but to get into it, you either have to have a science background or we've uh, got contracts with Jewish Vocational Services in Boston. And we've developed courses with them that will train people to prepare them to come into the certificate program yeah. and that's a 22-week program okay. and it's free to the people to go to Jewish Vocational Services wow. and so they're kind of a feeder to that program and the average age for students coming in to that program is about 40. Okay, see there, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, and the industry people said they really like those students because they're stable. Yes. You yes, know what I mean? They're, they're, not <laughs> yeah, they're probably not going to jump from company to company, right. and yeah. uh, but they get the same level of training. As they and do when, when I was touring program. your class uh, a couple several weeks ago, there was actually a young student who had a four-year degree. Yeah. So they will. You know, I told my daughter this too. She went to Marymount College. Yeah. And we're still paying that off. Uh, <laughs> yes. So we should have gone to college for two years and then went off somewhere else. But uh, I, 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 I don't. I don't I didn't appreciate as much as I do now yeah. how uh, how burdensome those loans are. Mm -hmm. You know, and she's my f my oldest, and I've said to her many times, go on our website. We have about 25 certificate programs. Uh, you may want to just augment your four-year degree, right. which is an education. Yep. She may end up there, may not. Uh, and then you're in a workplace with a four-year degree with a specific skill, and then you can grow from there. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely That's right. That's huge. Yeah, we're seeing folks that are, you know, being kind of, uh, you know, I don't want to say priced out of their their own field, but at least kind of moved out of their own field as they go as they grow older. Right. And need to find something else to supplement, you know, their yeah, income. Yeah. Right. So, so exactly. when I was sheriff yeah. for a few years, yeah. uh, there were times when somebody would come to me who had a two-year degree in liberal arts or a four-year degree, and in uh, they'd go and get a correction certificate for, and take about five to seven classes at Quincy College. Yes. And that showed me that they wanted to be in that field. That's right. Yeah. It's an indicator also yep. that That's you focus. Because, exactly. you, you know, you want a, typically, I mean, everybody, you know, we're going to change our careers many times. Sure. Uh, in, these days, these young kids. But, but you, you want somebody who has at least in the short term focused on a particular career. And that sh these certificates show the employer. Uh, that you took the initiative. That's right. Exactly. To better yourself. Right? Even if it's not exactly. a four to your degree, it, yep. it's, it takes you from zero to seven. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. um, since we first introduced the program, Bruce, uh, the biotechnology program, you've added good manufacturing to the oh, title as right, well. Yeah, right. What does that mean? Uh, good manufacturing practice is a key word for the industry okay. recognition. So we train people to learn how to work in the, these biopharmaceutical companies where they actually manufacture prescription drugs. All right, and so in order to be in that field, you have to understand good manufacturing practices, which is basically a federal, federal guidelines associated with this. Okay. And so um, when a company is looking at the degree and they see good GMP, good manufacturing practice, then they automatically know these people have something at a higher level mm -hmm. than somebody maybe coming out of some other type of Okay, program. so it gives them an edge. It gives them an edge. Okay. It definitely gives them an edge. All right, so they're looking for that, certainly. And it's so important, too, uh, to, to hear, I'm sure there's all kinds of FDA regulations that they need to know about and learn. Yeah. Uh, so to come in with that skill already under their belt, they're good to go. Basically, a seamless transition, right? Yes, and again, the, the training for the GMP part and the good documentation practice associated with that, all that was already checked through with all the industry people. Okay. It was reviewed from people from Shire at that time, from B Bristol Myers Squibb, yeah. and wow. all these high level quality people reviewed all that before we put it up. Okay. Yeah. Are you, in the program, are you actually d developing? 
new pharmaceuticals? I mean, are you are you study or at least studying developing new pharmaceuticals? So we, we no, we're not developing. Okay. But what we're doing is we're manufacturing like antibodies, yeah. which are a big biopharmaceutical drug, and so we do that in different types of cell lines, or we can uh, we can manufacture enzymes, which are used to treat uh, people that have enzyme deficiencies, and so a variety of different types of protein molecules, which are called bio molecules okay. to, in order for the people to um, have all those skill sets so that the manufacturing people themselves can know that these people are going to be able to do the job. They've already done it. Very yeah, basically. they've done yeah. it, exactly, with the exact same type of equipment because yes. the industry people help me select all of the equipment, yes. help me lay out the whole lab, and so they know exactly what they're getting. And that's where the student as they graduate. That's where these grants come in. And these that's where these new grants yeah, come in Most recently, well. just a million bucks, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But more to come. Yeah, so yeah, so we've just recently gotten three grants, a wow. big state grant for 725000 and we're using that money to upgrade what we have and to begin to get more equipment for the newer technologies that are coming through. And so um, that includes gene and cell therapy. Mm -hmm. Within a couple of years, the jobs are just going to be numerous mm -hmm. in that field and so we're working with different gene th and cell therapy companies to make sure that we're training people the correct way to do all of this stuff. And so we don't design the, what we do, right. we let the industry design it. Yep. And that way they know what it, they're getting. And, and that's and the role of community work. college. Yeah. I mean, there's, ma there's many roles of a community college. One is uh, international students who want to get a uh, great education affordably, or any student for that matter, in, li in light of these uh, increasingly burdensome uh, financial uh, yeah. commitments. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I think people understand it's almost at a tipping point. I yeah. think so, and you know, it, given the cost of housing too in this region, absolutely. It really yeah. is. And what the grants do is they give Bruce and us an opportunity to implement or continue to enhance certain practices through capital improvement, mm -hmm. uh, expansion of programs. But what it also does, it, it reinforces uh, that our reputation is pretty strong. Yes. You know, exactly. when somebody gives you grant money, they're saying that, yeah, we want you to build, but we know you have an incredible foundation. Yeah, yeah exactly. you've already developed a Because they don't like to a basis just for throw it. money uh, at folks who haven't pr have a, don't have a proven success record. Sure. Yeah. Especially Track the record. federal grants, I'm sure they, they, yes. you know, they need to show proof that, uh, that they're going to get some bang for their buck, essentially. Yes, and so that's what the new NSF grant, National Science Foundation grant we just got, is for 300000 Yeah, wow. And it's to develop high-level online virtual training programs okay. that are augmented reality really? programs okay. where you can actually online be working with a piece of equipment mm -hmm. as if you're in the lab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we use that to develop hybrid courses so that you practice on these before you get to the court class or you're in the class. We, I assign this and then you come in and you work with the actual equipment. Yeah. And the industry really likes this yeah. because the equipment we're using is very similar or identical to what they're using, and so they, they already get that practice. So to have that level of, of training at a community college level is, is, is probably unparalleled, I'm thinking. You know, it, yes, it, it's, it's pretty unique. Yeah. It's pretty unique. What is your background in this field, Bruce? I mean, you, you So I, I spent about 20 years in uh, biomedical research. Okay. Okay, All doing right. a lot of that type of stuff, and I, then I shifted over into the biomanufacturing industry. Okay. And, uh, so you've done all yeah, this. So, yeah, so I've done so this. you are an important resource yourself. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, yeah, yeah, because these programs uh, don't get established, created, they don't grow unless exactly. there's confidence uh, in the faculty. Right. The faculty. In, in, in the fa in it's like you said, the it's faculty driven by faculty, like faculty and students, yeah. Who, uh, you know, they take the time, they, the commitment to actually reach out to other colleges when they're writing curriculum to yep. see how uh, these students can move from a two-year institution to a four-year and reach out to employees. Uh, that's the only way it gets done. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And he's, I, a, a, a colleague of mine, Bob Coughlin, who's the head of the New England Biotech uh, Council, when, when I told him I was uh, heading over to Quincy College, he said, uh, do you know Bruce Van Dyke? <laughs> 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 this guy, he said, New England chair. Uh, right? And he knows he goes, who you are. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's created a niche, I don't know if you said the word niche, but that, that was yeah. my impression, that says program yeah. that, says that uh, yeah. you could quadruple that and you still wouldn't run out of opportunities for yeah. students graduating. Yeah. Uh, QuincyCollege.edu, uh, what main website do you Slash BTC. Slash BTC, uh, you yes. have your own <laughs> tab yeah, on the yeah, website, yeah, of course. Exactly, yes. <laughs> To learn more about it. And, but, uh, yeah, if I could just say yeah. one other thing. So we, um, 
if you're interested in this program, if people want to get into it, if you've taken some biology and chemistry, then you can jump into our biomanufacturing course. It starts in September. All right. Gentlemen, thank you both. Really appreciate it. We'll Thanks for the opportunity. Always thank a pleasure. Thank you, Joe. You're Good to welcome. see you again. Just enough time to recap the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. What you see is what you get. Beautiful sunshine and nice dry conditions into the uh, mid-80s this afternoon, but the humidity is on out of here. So tonight looks very comfortable for sleeping. Temperatures dip into the mid-60s. Not a bad weekend. I think Sunday is the better of the two, but even tomorrow is pretty nice with daytime highs in the uh, low to perhaps mid-80s and getting more humid again on Monday. Thanks again. Going out to Quincy College, President Mike Bellotti and Bruce Van Dyke here from the biotech program and good manufacturing program. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. We're off on Monday. Join us again next Friday at 1130. We'll feature the Norfolk County Mosquito Control Project on another edition of Currently in Quincy. We'll see you then.